every year, like I find a way to Google Somali, Somalia, and uh, the things that come up are not things that make me happy. They're just they're just horrible things that may or may happen. But when we're not telling these stories, then who is telling it on behalf of us? That's the scary thing. I feel like. It was really important for me to finally say, hey, I'm capable of telling my story, and, and I think I can do a better job than anyone because, hey, I lived it. My name is Ifra Mansour. I am a multimedia performance artist. I think that's just a fancy way of saying I make art and I love it, and I try to make it in as many different ways as possible. I was going to college at the University of Minnesota and there was a, a job post and it just said that a mixed blood theater was looking for a community liaison, someone that could market a mixed blood theater to the community. So I was seeing all these brilliant African-American, often female artists in their most beautiful plays at mixed blood. When I was in the theater watching these other people do what they do beautifully, I felt like everything of me was just at home. We're so blessed to have the largest uh, Somali community here in Minnesota outside of Somalia. And I really am inspired by the elders that I work with, also my friends as well. I think in these very private moments, we end up talking about sometimes beautiful, sometimes very ugly uh, times in Somalia. And I often never hear these stories, these experiences. So I wanted to take uh, these stories and I wanted to make sure that those stories are heard in a larger scale. When you hear the word Somalia, what comes to mind? It depends on who I hear it from. If I hear it from someone, a non-Somali person, I would think like, is there, is there a chance that you know the good things in Somalia? Or do you, are you, do you only know the stories of like struggle and poverty and war? I was asking people to tell some of their most uh, traumatic, some of their most private experiences to be part of a fictional work. So I knew what I was, uh, you know, the gravity of what I was asking of folks to do. I remember my first, my oldest brother got shot. I, I was, I remember I was saying I was, I wasn't gonna, not gonna go to sleep because I was gonna help my brother. I was gonna protect him. I was like, I think I was like four, or three. I don't remember how old I was. I was very, very young, and so I was just like, I shouldn't have gone to sleep. Why did I go to sleep? Those bad people, and they would just be like that. That those bad people, like you know, shot your brother. And I wanted to have even more presence of the interviewees um, on the play, and I felt like the next best way was to do some sort of visual documentation of them. The star of the whole this film is Shah. just her hands. Okay. And I guess the chef with it. Um, tea is very important for uh, Somali folks. It is used to make community, it is used uh, to tell stories. The, the tea literally became what made the interviews really successful. How do you, how do you make your share? Like, is, is there like a recipe, a step-by-step? -step? I put less sugar and I don't put all four spices. I put two spices. So I have to have ginger, fresh ginger, and either clove, cinnamon, or cardamom. One of those three. And I felt like just capturing their hands was uh, a way to uh, have a little bit of them in the play. Somali is a language that creates space in between things. It's a, it's a language that allows for the knowledge to flow through. Not everything has to be spoken for it to be true or for it to be real. The truth is we are an oral culture, so our history is passed down through words and names and stories. I mean, there's not one story to tell about Somalia. You know, some of the stories, obviously, I wouldn't talk about is just the brutal violence that I heard about. But a lot of people don't want to talk about conflict and death and people dying because it brings them back to that experience. It's very important to have 
uh, the Somali people come to the children's theater and for them to see a play that reflects their stories. I think that is the greatest way that we honor uh, the diversity of our Minnesotan community here. We stepped outside of our house. Whoa, even more gun noises. Bunch of cars moving really fast. So, so many people already on the streets. Whoa, running, walking. Oh, oh may, maybe it's that holiday that dad, 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 my dad took me to a while back. Oh, so I said a secret goodbye to our boring house and to our boring neighborhood. How to Have Fun in a Civil War is a play that is about the experience of Somali kids in Somalia when the Somali Civil War broke out right around 1991. My mom started crying and threw her arms around my brothers to hide them in her lap. I've never seen my mom cry before. I thought all adults had to give up crying to become adults. I love that the play is told from a kid's vantage point and inspired out of my personal experience of having to leave the capital, having to flee the capital. So other people are leaving their homes too? Whoa, only with a little bit of clothing and kids? N no pets. In the play, you'll find that there are people that have direct experience of the Civil War. They have gone through much like the little girl's family story. And then mom pulled me close. I, I never know how mom smelled. You know, I'm just like being held by my mom and in all the memories I'm like, I'm like close to the ground because I'm little and I'm like looking up and she's like this giant. She did her best to sort of veil us from what was happening around us, you know? I genuinely want to gauge uh, people's response to this kind of work. I also want to create uh, a, a, a sense of community. There's something about it that feels immensely healing because you're, you, oftentimes I was discovering of like, wow, my mom is even more of an awesome human than I thought she was, or my uncle or my brothers or the, the people near us. The, you keep discovering the, the strength of people because you're learning all that they went through. The play was really to create a space for people to get together. It's almost like the entire play was the tea making process. And you finally have these individuals who, uh, whomever showed, showed up and we were like, hey now, let's, let's actually hear you. Let's actually have you put your responses and your feelings, your connection out into the space. Let's give another applause to Ifra. Thank you so much. Diaspora is a term used to call people that live and were raised and born outside of Somalia. So I consider myself diaspora and simply because I feel like I know more of America now. It feels important to have someone that shares that with you and I hope that the play is like that for others, that we reimagine and create a world so that others could say, hey, maybe I felt a little bit of Somali or Somali. And I feel like if I can sneak in so many ways to capture that, perhaps that will inspire the next Somali kid or Somali girl to also create unique stories. That is the power of art, is that the possibilities is endless. Mm -hmm.